Yeah, hey, welcome back to Career Build Series, this is episode 161. And so I think what I want to do is, um, you know, if we, uh, yesterday the update came out for me, um, the Industrial Frontiers update. And so let's quickly take a look at that. So, um, you know, we learned some new stuff here about what's coming. And so, for example, this is a good picture here of uranium mining. And it shows, it shows an excavator here. And we kind of glean some information from this picture that the, uh, let me see if I can open this in a new tab here. Um, I'll do it later. But anyway, so we have an excavator in here and it's uh, mining uranium. So as you can see, we're going to want to be able to reach up onto walls. We're also going to want to get into tunnels. Uh, we, If we look at the actual drill head here, we can start to see some scale. Uh, that looks like a large electric motor there. Now, we don't need to use a large electric motor, but that's kind of giving me some scale there. I think my original excavator that I was building is oversized. Um, so I kind of want to whip that into shape, um, and I'm going to start a new one. And so this is a picture I took um, of an excavator that's more the size I want. And so I think I'm going to kind of use this as a guideline. I want to get it um, smaller. Um, I want to make it a little bit easier to transpo. I don't know if I'm going to be able to even spawn that large excavator in a bench. Um, so kind of making something early before we actually uh, know what we have, I kind of need to be a little conservative on the size. And so I'm going to kind of use this um, as a diagram and kind of try to use this as my template. So, for example, I have some, uh, you know, size, um, some, some, some scale information here that will be a little bit helpful for me to get some inspiration, uh, some diagrams. And I kind of go up that, and so I'm essentially going to build a new excavator. And I think that's uh, the thing to do is uh, start going. You know, I have some trucks. I can probably whip together some other vehicles to... Uh, you know, probably end up want to make a front end loader or something to be able to scoop the ore up, but I have trucks, so I think an excavator to do the drilling um, and potentially, you know, putting a bucket on the excavator to lift up the ore into a truck and then, um, you know, actually using the, uh, you know, my regular standard trucks I think will work, so I need to try to do that. So uh, let's go ahead and let's um, start moving here. I'm just still working on trying to find good diagram so that I can get all of the specs um, and dimensions. That wasn't the best one that I had there. So looking at the manual here, seeing if I have um, so better dimensions. It doesn't have to be exact, but, um, you know, a little bit better is good. So, like, let's go in here. So, like, here I have my actual numbers for my scale. So I'm going to use that. Um, just kind of a baseline. You know, I find that if you use real, um, real vehicles, real specifications, you start to get a better notion of, um, you know, it looks right because it's scaled properly and then we'll see how that works. So this is going to be much smaller than my other one. So, for example, I'm looking at, um, let's see, I'm looking at track gauge, which is also, uh, yeah, track gauge is also about the width of the uh, cab. So I'm going to start with the cab, um, kind of the, you know, the whole cab area and the engine compartment and trying to see what we're looking at for um, size here. And so I'm looking at, um, it's, let me see where we're at here. These are all booms. Track gauge. So we're talking about uh, 2590 for, um, what's it that in? Uh, millimeters. So that's uh, 2. Point, say about 2.5, 2.6 uh, meters wide. So I'm going to start trying to get this going and. You know, I might not finish it. I might just uh, try to scale it out. That's 2.25. That should be 2.5 there. And then, oh, that's 2.75. So the one thing I have to think about is, 
the boom. Now I want the boom centered, so let's let's kind of make a flat plane here first before I do too much. It's kind of annoying the way they have this diagram, but I should be able to interpret um, where it is. So like, you know, I can use the track length, which is 4.64 meters for length. So let's see, that's 4.5. Four point seven five, so that's good. So this is going to be kind of the footprint, and so I want the bucket centered, or the uh, arm centered. So that'd be right there. Then I need to think about how wide I want this, and I probably want it to be an odd number, so three wide. And then I need to be able to put the cab in here. So the cab's going to go right here. Well, the issue is I have a, I have to put a three seat in there, so. You know, if I put in the seat like this, as you can see, I'm going to need one more block to make it um, so that I can put a cab around that. So just because of the constraints, what I'm going to do is go one more set there, and I'm actually going to do two longer. And that will just keep it within scale, so the uh, dimensions will be kind of similar. And that way, when I put in a cab, as you can see, this will kind of be scaled and that's you know often in storm arts you kind of have to overscale things a little bit because of these reasons you know and so I'm just gonna again I'm roughing out the shape this isn't gonna be you know what it will be like at the end but this will be kind of a rougher shape um, you know just get the dimensions correct once the dimensions are kind of correct I think we're in better shape here You know, so like that will be the cab. This will be the arm here, and so I think I think I'm gonna make try to make both sections of the boom uh, three. And so what I want to do here is let's cut that. You know, we'll start working on the pivot here, pivots. And so. And put the pivots in here like this. Uh, that's too wide. Let's go full three wide. Tends to work better with odd numbers, so that's why I'm doing three wide. All right, so that will get me my arm there. And so I kind of want to just keep working on this uh, cab. So the, we have the cab there. Trying to see if this is going to be spacious enough. I think I want to move most of this back one. I have the space and I have kind of what I need to do there. All right, so let's cut that and let's move that back one. That will give me any gauge space I need on there. There we go. All right, and so this is starting to kind of come along. I'm going to knock some windows in. It's got this kind of... Yeah, that kind of is coming along. Like this will be the door, will be glass door there. Just kind of following the diagram and kind of looking at this. And then you usually have a back window in there like so. So there's kind of a rough cab. And then behind the cab, it actually comes pretty high, so I kind of want to go maybe there. And so again, I'm just kind of boxing out. So the counterweight's going to be in the back. I'm just trying to get the uh, this set up here so that we have engine weight and counter, engine compartment and counterweight, and then kind of has a bigger box here for the, where the engine is. Counterweight's just in the very back, so probably let's do like th two or three for the counterweight. And then, like, maybe one higher for the um, 
like kind of over the engine there. And then we'll do like intakes and stuff there. So just again, fleshing out the shape. If I can get the shape correct, that really helps. So let's go ahead and do a quick measurement here. Hopefully this is an odd length. 21, perfect. So um, let's go 11. And then, so that is, that right there is going to be the um, center of the length. And then what's the width? The width is 13. So we're talking seven. So this here is the center. And so I want to work my pivot in there. And so I'm going to do a power pivot. This will allow me to um, transfer the engine power down to the tracks. Uh, actually, I'm trying to decide what I want to do. Uh, 360 degree turn would be cool, but I don't think it's the be all end all. I think I'm just going to make it a 180 turn. I can always change it later. Um, this is going to be a little bit easier to work with uh, making it a um, make it like this instead of doing 360 degree turn. I think that's the way to do it. I can always change it later if need be. And then, so I kind of want to make a oh, let's do some symmetry here. And so the tracks stick out, um, let's see how much more than the, uh, so we have about 2.6 meters for the width of the cab, and then the track width is, um, talking about 3.38 for the widest versions, so kind of keep that in mind. All right, so I'm just kind of building this out here. This has um, kind of a wide section under here, like so. And this is where it's going to connect to the to the track section. Is right here. Yeah, you know, I'm trying to decide if I wanted it to be 360 degree articulation. I'm kind of almost leaning towards 180. Just for simplicity's sake, it's going to be much easier to, to set it up and run it. And I don't know, you know, as much as a, real, a realistic one turns 360. It's not really necessary, and so I'm trying to kind of decide if I want it or not. All right, and so then I need to kind of bring some this down for tracks. Let's see. I might have to go one more down before I can kind of track it. Now let me see if I can find the middle. Nope. There. Is that really the middle? Nope, I'm screwed up here. One, two, three, and then this is four back here, so I've kind of gone overboard there. Okay, so this needs to come back here. All right, just trying to keep the symmetry the same here. Front and back, and left and right. All right, so there's kind of I'm hoping to hook up my track. So I'm just kind of setting this up to uh, receive the tracks here. And I'm putting much smaller tracks on. The tracks are way too large, the ones I had on before. So there's a there's an overhang on the back. And you re want this overhang because you actually, the counterweight can detach and drop down on cables. I don't think I'm going to actually add that in, but um, that is how it's set up, and that's why you have an overhang. And then so, let me measure this. This is 21, and so this should be 21 as well. It's just offset forward, so that's 22. That's fine. We'll keep it one longer. All right, and I'm going to try start putting wheels in. 
And so he's using huges before. I don't want huges. Let's try. See what larges look like. Might want to go down one if I use larges. Spawn it and see what those tracks look like. They look good. They just I I need them definitely down one one lower. The width is perfect. I think they can come in one and go down one. So let's do that. So again, using a diagram often helps you with um, getting the scale to look right. So much of a build functioning or looking right is having the scale correct. And you know, if you know, of course, you have fantasy builds and build them whatever you want. But um, you know, if you actually want it to be kind of look realistic, um, a lot of that scale is it just you know, you might even not know why it doesn't look right, but it just doesn't look right. And a lot of that has to do with scaling is often wrong. And so kind of scaling things a little bit more realistically often helps in fixing that problem. OK, that's good. And so we're kind of just trying to figure out how to get this section to look better. I think like that, maybe. All right, so I think that's better. And then let's spawn that and check it. I think this is going to look right for tracks. Yeah, that looks much better. They, they're they supposed to overhang a little bit, and uh, we need a gap. And so we have that gap. So I want this to be stationary, I think. I'm trying to see. Yeah. Let's check my colors and kind of see where we're at here. Yep, so that's good. This will be stationary, and this turns, articulates. That's perfect. So that looks really good. Let's start plumbing up the drive wheels here. So these are the drive wheels, and these need to be plumbed. So and then. Trying to think how I want to clutch this out and do that. I think what I can do is kind of hide the mechanisms in there. So let's do that. I'm going to hide the, mech the drive mechanisms for the tracks up in here. That is, OK, I can go up one more. So good. I have good space in here. I can kind of hide the drive mechanism. So I think we'll split it off here. So again, I'm thinking about the actual mechanics of this, trying to solve problems now before they become a nightmare later. And, you know, I want it functional first, and then I'll go into some of the more decorative items, because if I can't get the function, I have to rip apart the decorative items anyways. So it's always kind of beneficial to hit, hit the uh, functional items first, and then you're uh, good to go. All right, good. So that is now going to have drive coming to the wheels. So I need to um, get this set up. So what I want to do here is kind of almost thinking of it like a dual clutch transmission. And so what I mean by that is I'm, I'm trying to think I might do a clutch, essentially clutch forward, clutch reverse so that I don't worry about stalling out and I can have very quick um, very quick changeover from forward and reverse and that's going to be important to me and so you know, it probably doesn't make sense what I'm saying but I'll kind of show you and that will make it a little bit um, easier to figure out here oh, I just screwed myself up there I think nope that was what I wanted to do okay 
So that's going to go like that, and then so I'm going to essentially run uh, two clutches per side. One's going to be forward, one's going to be reverse. And so this is kind of how like my Mac Pinnacle runs is having multiple, uh, having high and low gearboxes. But essentially this is just set up for forward and reverse gearing essentially. So we're going to have a master gear come out of the um, engine itself. And then these are just going to be actually um, just need one set. And one set of these is going to be set to uh, reverse. And so that will be reverse. So um, what we're going to do is, as I, you know, the time it takes to reduce one clutch and go to the next, that's going to um, hopefully do some stall prevention. I'm trying to think if I really need two or not. I could probably run it through one, I'm thinking. I'm going to try it out. Let me try to do it on one, and if I need to do this later, I have it in there and I can just set it, so even leave that in there for now and then I'll do gearbox it doesn't matter what uh, direction is pointing because this is just going to be a reverse of gear and then the master gear is essentially just going to that will have the um, actual speed coming out of it alright so let's go Yeah, so let's go like this. Again, just kind of conceptualizing this in my head and then putting it to uh, putting it in the builder. Oh my god, if I, I'm upside down, so I can't really. It's tough for me to figure out my orientation here. That's why I'm having to turn things like nine times. Okay, good. So power is going to come down. It's going to go to the two track sections. Um, and so what's going to happen is this is going to clutch. Uh, when this changes gear, and that's going to, um, might want to put the clutches ahead of the gears, but uh, let's do that. That'll just be easier. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so now, uh, what well, that will do is that will clutch us, and then um, we could change gears, and that will keep the motor from stalling. So essentially preventing back pressure on the motor. And that will hopefully uh, let us operate our gears, our tracks, without having too many problems. But I think this is shaping up pretty well. See, it actually, the pivot is actually further forward on this. So I'm, again, I'm looking at the diagram. Let me bring it up so you can see it. But you see how the pivot is right under the cab section? So I kind of want to move that forward. I don't want it, like mine is right centralized. I want that. Like right here-ish. Yeah, so I think I want to move that up as, as far as I can. So let me do all that. And then this floor plate here on the... Uh, it's kind of... Let's just do this. I'm going to move all of it. And then I'll just cut and I'll just uh, delete some blocks. But let's go ahead and go to... Kind of want to go till that. Um, see, I can go quite a bit here. I'm just changing the pivot point. I'm trying to see where it has it. So it has it just aft of the seat, pretty much. It doesn't have that. Uh, I'm trying to think exactly. I'm looking. Just, I'm just kind of consulting my picture. I think that's pretty good there. And then I'm going to move the tracks again, but um, there we go. And then this can be filled in. And then the tracks themselves need to move. So. All right, and so I'm going to set this up where I want it. So I'm just kind of, again, visualizing where it is on the diagram. Make sure I have plenty of overhang. That's pretty good there, I think. And so that just resets the pivot 
point essentially for the cab. Pretty simple, pretty easy, not too bad. Again, it's good to do this now before um, get into too much of the mechanics being connected and then have to run a ton of extra stuff, but um, this isn't bad so far. Definitely the time we want to be making these decisions. All right, good. Let's start merging this up. Um, Right, we'll hook to that. This will hook to that. All right, good. So now we have the new setup. Let's look at it. All right, good. So, yeah, you definitely want to like this because you want the counterweight to overhang the tracks on the side. Looking pretty good. Scale-wise, this is much better. Like, I'd like this to fit on my trailer. I would like to be able to truck this in. The other one was just enormous. All right, um, let me see if I can, I'm going to keep looking through this diagram and try to find, uh, I have the working range um, diagram. So working range is how far I can reach. I'm trying to find kind of the boom specs. Uh, boom lift capacities. There's a 4.4 ton counterweight. Yeah, so I'm just kind of uh, looking at the different sections. It, it will, it does ma uh, overall boom. I'm just trying to find the actual. Um, I might just kind of do it by sight because they have multiple versions um, with multiple boom lengths. So I'm just kind of gonna, you know, like I'm gonna look at the. Um, you see, these are all different uh, boom lengths and reaches. So I kind of want to just eyeball it. Like, see, this is a really, like, you can see that there's different boom lengths on it. And so, like, see, this is a much shorter boom than this boom. This is a very long-reach boom. I don't want a long-reach boom. I want kind of a shorter-reach boom. I'm trying to see what is uh, feet. So we, what are we talking here? We can go down. So from the ground, we can go down about 6 meters, and we can go... So uh, where's the central point two? So we're talking about eight meter total um, arm length, maybe something like that. So let's start working on the arm. So kind of thinking about you know where it default. You know I need to be able to spawn this in. So let's uh, let's save this really quick. I don't know what kind of bench we're gonna be we're gonna have in the new world. And that was again that was one of my. Um, was one of my fears was that that large of a um, that that large of an excavator that I built last time I might not even be able to spawn that anywhere you know except a large base a large um, hangar and then the problem is if it's far from the actual mine I have to then transport it somehow so I need to build see like this now you see I can spawn this in here so I'm gonna finish this in here you know it might still struggle to get out of here but if I can get this in here that means this fits on a train I can also transport this with a train so this is this is a positive uh, endeavor to kinda get it start going in here I think so let's go ahead and get back and let's do it from this workbench and then, you know, once we have the new update and I kind of see if, uh, you know, if we're going to get a bigger bench, I can do that. So now what I want to do is I'm, I'm going to try to set this arm up so that it works in this bench. I have a lot of length here. Also, it's going to be easier to load on a truck if it's kind of, if I set the boom to start in a certain orientation. And so I'm trying to, so I'm, I'm just going to eyeball a lot of this. So I'm going to do kind of one by blocks there. Then I think I'm going to go two wedges for a little bit for the main reach of the main boom. I, th I think it has like kind of a, like a knuckle. So we'll do the next knuckle with these and then maybe even do one by fours after that, like so. All right, so a lot of this is eyeballing. Again, they have multiple different boom lengths, so I can kind of play with this and just kind of make it what I want to make it. Um, 
lengthwise. And so see, I have a long reach here in this hanger um, for the train. So I can kind of just work it um, in this correct orientate in the orientation for this hanger and then kind of play with it and fix it later. So I'm trying to think. Everything is easier if you do it in odd numbers. So I'm trying to keep all of this in odd numbers. Like, see, that would be three blocks across. Is that too thin of a boom? That's definitely too thin of a boom. So let's go ahead and let's go. Let's try four. See if that's that's not a bad um, boom orientation there. I think. I just need to see if I need to go up one or here. I think, I think an up one. All right, let's just play with shapes here, trying to get this to look right and orient correctly. Okay, so yeah, I think that's good. This looks a little thin in there. I can thicken that up later. Again, a lot of this is eyeballing it right now. All right, so. Let's uh, try to figure out this next angle here. Yep, so it's gonna have to be there. Let's cut into that. And see how we look here. Yep, that's not bad. This is looking thin in here. I can I can readjust that, but I'm liking the overall liking the overall look of it. Um, yeah, so that's looking pretty good. Again, that's thin in there. I can fix that. Then I think I'll come in here and I'll do one by fours in there. All right, so that's pretty good, I think, shape wise. So we're shaping up uh, pretty nice. I definitely need to fix this boom section here. I think what I'll do is I'll start my one by ones one block earlier in here. Yep, and that will give that a little bit more uh, thickness there, a little bit more width. All right, so I'm going to cut in. I'll, I'll make kind of the walls on this, and that will, uh, again, I can see scale a little bit better when it's filled in. Yeah, so that's pretty good. Um, this is even curves a little bit more than I want or need. All right, and then so the second boom section is going to go in here. And so I actually want that second boom section to be three across as well. And so, um, again, three across is a magic number just because um, it allows you to put all your pivots in and everything. If I didn't have three across, I'd have to use one pivot. I can use two pivots doing it like this. And then I'm going to go straight. Um, our orientation now, I'm keeping these straight now um, because, oh, uh, crap, I'm not going to be able to make do two there. That's fine. Um, I'll do one there. That's not the end of the world. Again, I like to use pivots to actually do the articulation and then kind of fake any, um, see this, this thins out more at the end here. Let's go, um, yeah, I'm look, just looking at the diagram again. This kind of thins out towards the end here, like that. And then I want to do my pivot in here. 
All right, and so that's that section. So I'm going to use uh, what I was starting to say. I'm going to use my pivots as um, the actual art articulating parts, and then um, pivots actually do the articulation, and then the um, pistons are just for show. The pistons are very spongy. Um, so this is going to be the middle section of this next boom section. So I'm just trying to scale this properly. So it's maybe two-thirds the length of the first section. That's not bad. That's a pretty good reach. I don't want, this doesn't need to be excessive either. All right. So we need probably about two blocks of space for that. And then I think we'll do like just trying to scale this up right. That's too big. Okay, that's good. Oh, I didn't mean to delete it. Come on, give me the block I want. Again, we kind of have to shape the best we can with having the parts we have, and then this will um, Just kind of work in the overhang on this and how this sets up. So I think I want to move this section up one. Again, just kind of consulting the diagram here and how this should look. All right, cut this and this will move up one and go in. Oh, come on. Give me the right arrow. I hate these arrows. I really do. And then that will probably give me the right swing that I need. Again, I'm going to get the function going first, and then I'm going to worry about fixing any aesthetic problems that I might have. So I kind of want to get moving on s some of these armatures just to check, make sure they're going to turn properly. So let's go up, down. It's going to be the, um, let's do it sticky. Let's do like 2%. Um, that's going to be boom, one. And then um, WS is going to be boom, two. Two, and then AD will be um, bucket. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, that should be sticky. That should be sticky. Let's hook these up and just kind of play with it a little bit and see how things are working for me. WS, and then where's AD? AD, AD. I haven't done yet. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's play with this arm a little bit. Um, you know, when the arm is fully stretched out, the um, final section, boom two, is actually higher than boom one. Um, this is being annoying just because of the way I have it, but um, let's see. Oh, infinite electricity would probably be helpful. Okay, so there is boom one. Let me look at it from inside. Okay, perfect. Um, so, pre so I'm at my max uh, up on this. I need to be able to fix that. And then that's interacting. That's fine. I 
can fix that. Okay, good. So this needs to change the way it operates here. Just the uh, the pivot position here, I I screwed up initially. So these need to change. Um, the annoying thing is that pipe section. But whatever, I can add some sort of uh, design element on that. Getting messages here. Let's let me move these. Just cut them, and I'll cut the pieces that I need to cut. Dogs being loud too. Everybody's being loud today. All right. So. Um, and so uh, let's. I'm just trying to think how I want to set this up. Yeah, so this, um, the way I had these pivots initially set up, they couldn't turn. Uh, they could turn one direction. This way they'll turn in both directions where I need it. So that's, uh, that's all I was doing there. All right. All right, let's kind of remerge this all, all this crap together here. All right, good. So that's that again. This is hitting. Um, so what, what I kind of need to do is this section here needs to move forward one, I think. And I think just for a design element there, I'll do two by wedge here. There we go. That'll give it a little bit of a different shape. And then I think I, what I can do is go like this. No. Um, go like me what I want. Give me what I want, not what I'm clicking. That's when you kind of wish it would read your mind a little bit and make life just that much easier. All right, so that's going to be our center section there. I'm just going to flesh this out. Kind of want the weight of the foot blocks being filled in there. Yeah, I could also, you know. Sometimes it's stronger if you have more weight in there, so I could hide weight blocks in the center, but I'm not going to do that yet. If I really need it, I'll do it. All right, so now let's try this now. So I just want to check all the articulation. I want to make sure it's moving well. So there is up, down. Before, I couldn't move this beyond. Um, what is it hitting? It's hitting something now. Okay, so I have two blocks there. That would be why that's misbehaving. Okay, let's try it now. Again, I want to get this articulation correct. It's annoying being in this hangar, just trying to get that going. So I want to make sure this goes past. See, it, that's, that's an issue with um, the pivots. Uh, let's see. Is it general physics is high? Okay, good. So it's not a physics problem. It's probably weight. So again, um, I'll just get out of there. Let me get out of the menu, please. Let's try adding some weight to this. See if I can't get that. Um, again, sometimes adding weight will actually makes it function better. So let's do that. Uh, let's see. I should be able to add even more in here. Okay, that's that, and then can I cut in there? I can, okay. So I'm just going to kind of dump some weight blocks in here and uh, see if I can get better performance with more weight. Usually I don't have to do this too much, but um, I'll add it in now and then um, got to deal with it later. All right, so that's in. Uh, let's go ahead and let's add as much weight in here as I can. Again, sometimes it functions better when it's heavier. 
And so the, I'm just not going to worry about the kind of the facade pieces yet. And I'm just trying to wait this wait, wait this section up. Um, it'll often be less janky, be a little uh, smoother if it has some mass to it. And then I can, you know, I've built plenty of cranes, and I rarely have to overweight them too much. Um, so I'm kind of, I'll deal with it in a second here. But um, all right, let's try it now. See how it functions for me. Again, you see how it's leaning forward? That's fine because we're going to put a lot of weight in the back as a counterweight. So we don't have to worry about that right now. All right. All right, it gets to there and it wants to misbehave. So um, kind of watching what it's doing here. Okay, I might put actually have the pivots do something and have them help it. Okay, so that section, um, I'm trying to get this high enough I can make it work here. I wonder if I have the pivots set backwards. Let me look. I'm trying to see the rotations of the pivots. That's up. Oh, yep, that's why they're the pivots are backwards. That's a dummy me mistake. Okay. Oh, don't do that. Come on, get rid of symmetry, you dopey dope. Okay, good. Yeah, see, the pivots were backwards. Uh, one, they were fighting each other. I was, I was wondering why. I, like, you know, people often say you have to add weight to the sections. I've literally never had to do that because, I don't know, just the way I tend to build them, I don't end up having to do it. Um, and so I was wondering why it was misbehaving. There we go. So they were they were not the same, so that would be why. So let's try it now. I was wondering because I was pushing up and it was going the opposite direction while they're fighting each other, so that was it. All right, let's uh, go ahead. Oh, come on, dude. If you hook them up, that would be helpful, right? This is the first build of the morning, so I'm uh, the brain doesn't necessarily want to work this early in the morning. Okay, there we go. Nice and strong now, so that's um, that's good. Let's go section two. That's way too fast, but um, oh, come on, dude. I hate being in this hangar. It's just tough to see. So let's do this. Instead of complaining about it and being a grouchy grouch, let's save it. All right, let's save that. Let's go back to Draymore. We know this is going to fit. That was the main point, is make sure it fits in the train hanger. Um, you know, it's probably going to be tough to get out with the um, tracks, but um, that's something we can worry about. Again, I just want to make sure it's compact enough that I can get this sucker in and out of where I need to go. All right, and let's go ahead and let's add counterweight on now. That's something we're just going to have to do. So this has like a four-ton counterweight on it. Um, so I'm just going to add that in there to counterweight the boom, or the boomza. All right, so this is this is max up on this section, so I don't need this pivot. Um, I don't need this pivot in this orientation. What I need it is in the this orientation. There we go. So I'm just reorienting this pivot now. Okay, come on, undo that. Click on what you want to, dude. Okay, and then the um, this is way too fast. That's at a ten. Let's make it at a four. I want it faster than boom one, but um, slower than it currently is. And then so the the last section will probably be faster. Now I can actually see what I'm doing. Isn't that nice? Look at that. All right, go up, come down. Yep, that's better. That's smoother. Again, I don't want this whipping around. So I essentially, I want to be able to reach right in front of my... Um, let me see. Yeah, see, I need to move it again because I don't want to go up. Okay, good. So that's just one more rotation, and this will be fixed here. So, 
cut that, go zang like that. Nope. It's turning ops to how I want it. There we go. Nope. Uh, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to figure this out. I'll figure this out eventually. I'm just going to do a trial. I'm just going to do it uh, trial by error here because um, brain's not working fast enough to figure it out without doing it. See, I don't want it to go up. I want it just to come down. Everybody and their brother is messaging me all at once. I wish they'd stop. Okay, so see, like, that needs to come in more. Um, let me try to conceptualize this and figure out exactly how I want to do this. All right, so this is going to be the max up position here. I'm going to delete this out for now, and I'm going to orient the pivot so that I can actually see the damn thing. All right, so that can go both up and down. Hmm. I could hang it down. That's, I think, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to hang it down, I think. So let's, uh, what I'll do is this. I have the space here, I think, to do it, so I'm just going to do it. Um, yeah. It's probably a way, but I just, at this point, it's not. Like, see, I have enough reach. See, I have enough room. If I didn't have enough room, I wouldn't do this. See, I don't think the, um, I don't think I'm going to attach the, um, permanently attach the actual grinding head. I think that's going to be, um, I'll have that attached. Like in real life, what they do is they essentially have um, a coupler and you attach different things like a jackhammer like that picture that I showed you had a jackhammer on it. Um, oh, come on. And so, um, you know, I want to be able to add different things like a bucket because I might be able to do a bucket to actually... Um, You know, do the bucket for uh, picking up ore. So. All right, and then this whole Johnny here can come in. All right, so that boom tube will slide in like this because I have the space. I was going to play with it and contort it, but instead of screwing around, what I can do is I can just set it up like this and then this will work and it'll be less um, screwing around essentially so let's try to do less screwing around bingo all right so let's test this now so see it sits on that that's fine I don't really care um, and it always helps if you actually hook it up it really does I will tell you, it helps to hook it up. All right. There we go. All right, let's try it now. I didn't reset the speed of it, so it's going to be faster than I like, but whatever. <laughs> Again, these are finalizing steps. So this should go in and fold. It doesn't need to fold all the way up against perfectly. Like you see, it's interacting there. That's fine. Um, what I could do is... Yeah, see, like right there, that's fine. That's about the reach I want because you figure it still has a bucket to go on the end. That fits perfectly with what I'm looking for. That's too slow. This is actually not bad on speed. So what is this? Um, what is... Oh, it should be the same. Uh, WS is 4. Let's make this um, up, down, 3. Again, the longer, the bigger the element that's moving, the slower I want it to go. Um, and that's just so that, you know, it's, it's moving more mass. So, you know, um, object in motion tends to want to stay in motion. So when you stop, it's going to shake the whole vehicle. So, like, it, like, when I let go, see how it shakes the vehicle up? If that was moving faster, it would shake it more. That's a smaller element. It weighs less. I can move that even faster than it's currently moving. Let's go to 6 on that. 
Um, you know, and you see that's not shaking us much because that weighs a lot less than boom one. You know, that will have the weight of, of the uh, implement on it. But as you see, that's you see the track sliding back and forth as that moves. So like that gives us good motion. We have good reach. You know, max length, max reach here is um, is pretty good, as you can see. You know, we can reach really well out. As you see with the counterweight now, we're leaning forward a little bit, but not bad. Perfect. So that's looking good. Um, yeah, I'm liking this. All right, so let's go ahead and let's work on section, th uh, the last section here. And so what I kind of want to do is trying to see how to set this up. You know, they we don't have a lot of like I can't make parts small enough to do the same type of articulation mechanism that they do. Um, but what I can I can try to do something to get it there. All right, let me see how I want to do this. Okay, so I think I cut in like that. Let's go ahead and drop a pivot in. Again, I want the pivots commanding everything. I don't want um, I don't want the pistons to actually do anything. And so what I want to do here is I want to go like that I'm trying to think how to set this up with connectors so that it works right yeah I'm kinda of thinking of how to set up connectors because um, I think it's gonna have to be a three connector system three points of contact is going to keep it from rotating. You kind of see what I mean in a second here. So, yes, I think this is going to have to be three points of contact like so, or else it's going to try to snap and move around. That way, um, whatever I attach here won't cause problems. Yeah, so like this, I think. And then the piston can come. Uh, piston. Try to think how to do this. The piston is faked. Let's let's put it that way, declaratively. Piston is going to be faked, um, but I definitely want pistons on there. Uh, that looks right, and so that's important to me is how this looks. I want it to look accurate. Okay, I think I kind of, I'm, I'm, so I'm just trying to work the mechanism out in my head, which always takes a second to kind of um, figure out. I'm thinking that almost. It's a little bit clunky, chunky, too big, but again, it's one of my complaints is parts are just enormous in this and so that can be tough to get parts to kind of be where you need them size wise so let's see if I can't get a piston to snap to this proper hydraulic pistons would be very cool all right, so again, if, if you don't know this, if you set this uh, power to zero, that will, um, there'll be no resistance. So let's try this here. Oh, so this, this is going to be obnoxious. This section here is going to be totally obnoxious. That's kind of being annoying. <laughs> All right, you pain. All right, so I can fix, I can make this less obnoxious by doing... Um, Make this less obnoxious by doing this. Like that is max up that I want in the bucket. 
Let's do that. I just don't want this hiding in there like it was. Kind of annoying setting this up here, but um, again, it's going to be faked at the end of the day anyway, but um, uh, it's hopefully this, and then I'm just going to make, um, I did this on the, um, on my LeBaire crane. I put a pipe here, so the pipe causes it so that it can't uh, go up. Not ideal, but it makes it so that it has to fall down. So let's try it. Oh, uh, you, yep, you're gonna do stupid nonsense. I, I'm just gonna test this out really quick and see if this works. Um, let's go logic. Ws, where's ad? Ad is here. Ad is this section. And then for now, I'm just gonna delete these off, and I just want to get this mechanism working. What is it? Mm. Getting annoyed. I want this to connect. Yeah, see that's that's a mess. That's not gonna work, so let's kinda declare that that's not gonna work as envisioned there. So here I'll show you how this works, IRL, and why this is a pain. So let me see, can I can I zoom in? Okay, there we go. So if you look here, see this mechanism here? So you have an offset where the bucket connects. And then you have this armature coming here. And that is what connects the piston. So when you push this armature, it allows you to go around the horn with essentially having a piston that just goes forward and back. All right. And so let me rethink this, see if I can't get it to uh, connect right. Yeah, because I need this to stick out in order for me to get that piston to work. Let me redo the piston here. Uh, let's try this first before I screw around too much. Let's do one quick connect of this and see how this functions, and then if it functions. There we go. So that that's the only thing that can connect to now. All right. Only thing that can connect to now. Um, let's go up, and now let's push the... Um, the final section A and D down. All right, so see how it's 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 pushing the piston as well, and then that gets to max reach. So that's all I have on my piston. So these pistons are just too freaking short, man. We need better pistons in game, but we just don't have them at the moment. So. This could work, I just have to orient the, um, see, like, I can still, I can still move in like that to get more angle. You know, I don't like this mechanism, um, the AD mechanism, but, um, but it's, you know, it's working, it's just I need to work at it, essentially. Um, so let's get... I just I still want to kind of work on this a little bit and try to get this where it's going to function hopefully. Okay, coming up is definitely going to help. Grab this. All right, so I'm going to put a fake bucket on here. This will just give me something to um, work with. And so this needs so this is going to be. Do you think where max angle is on the bucket? And so I'm just going to make a fakey bucket, something here. Um, I'm just going to do the shape of a bucket. So I can kind of visualize what a bucket would look like here and the position of the bucket so you know, okay, is it being dumped? Is it being filled? What's it doing? You know, so that's what I'm doing here is just kind of make a fake bucket that tells me, hey, this is the orientation of the bucket. And if I say bucket one more time, I'm going to go nuts. But um, All right, there we go. Um, so kind of just, this is my, I'm not going to say the word again. So there's my scooper. Um, 
you know, so this is where the load would go in and then that's, so I'm just kind of conceptualizing it and using this shape to kind of conceptualize the angles. So right there, that is going to be closed. So it is closed. And so I just need to make sure that I can open it. And so I'm going to go boom up. And then AED, so there's dump. So as you see, it doesn't let me dump enough. And I don't need to close it anymore. So, okay, so I can, I have more piston length, so I can go up more. And then, yeah, so definitely up more. So, and I'm just kind of talking to myself, but you'll, you'll see what I mean in a second here is this, what I'm talking about when I mean up more is this can go probably up one block. Problem is the further away it gets from the pivot, the more piston you need. And that's why you have that mechanism is to keep the throw short. So what I kind of need to do here is this, I think, is where the pivot needs to be. Let's try the pivot here. Again, I'm just working on this articulation mechanism here. Trying to get, this is where you start getting into all the actual engineering of it. Okay, like that, let's spawn it. And these are always annoying because you kind of have to, you kind of have to help them and set them up just right so they fit and attach. Oh my god, it was close here. Okay. Oh my god, I'm spinning around here. Alright, let's do this. Alright, again, this stuff is faked anyways, but um, it's kind of an important part to me is having the actual look like hydraulics is something that I enjoy and I want that to be right. Okay. And then of course this is going to change everything now that I just added that, which is fine. But this will give me a uh, longer reach, which is what I want. Again, these pistons don't do anything. They're just for aesthetics, but um, you know, that makes it look proper and right. Oh my god, get to the block that I want, please. Thank you. Okay, let's try this. All right, so that goes up. All right. Okay, so now we're in business. We're close here to where I need to be. Very close to where I need to be. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Why can't I grab what I want? There we go. Cut that, cut. Um, I can either recess it. I think if it comes out too much, that looks too clunky. I think what I do is recess it like so. That's what I think I do. Recess it in the arm. And then... Give me this, please. Thank you. Um, let's try that. All right, so as you can see, that's now connected. Let's see how much um, articulation space we have here. The cl again, the closer I can get it in there, that's why it's in the arm, the longer the reach I can have. So you can see that's there, and then let's see what my max length is. Look at that. So now I can really articulate this. Still have some issues with that pivot being where it is, but um, okay. So I kind of have a solution for this. Um, the pivot just needs to change 
where it is. And so the pivot is going to come over here, one block. Okay, so I'm kind of going to re-screw with this a little bit here. Again, this is me getting the actual function going of this first, um, kind of doing, you know, a function over form a little bit. Yeah. I was trying to think out the angles here. You know, I have to think of all the art, uh, the geometry in my head, and then kind of put it to. Um, put it in practice. And so that's a little bit tricky is getting that geometry right and then, you know, essentially putting it in. So I kind of have to think of the geometry before I do anything and that's kind of, you know, that's that's where the challenge is, just getting the geometry right um, the first time. Alright, let's try I think we're going to be able to go up one like this. Let's try this. All right, let's try this geometry here. So I want to be able to have full bucket swing, essentially, or full implement swing. All right, so that is currently, I should have some room to go up with this. And every time you delete a pivot, you big dummy, you have to hook it back up. So it's me forgetting to hook it up for the 900th time. All right, good. So we're getting close here, I think, to having this um, where it needs to be. Um, and then we'll finish it up. So this is really working well. I'm, I'm much more pleased with this. This is a better, more manageable size. The other excavator is kind of, it was just nuts, the scale of it. Okay, let's go ahead and let's articulate this final section. So, you see, that's just, it's being slow. Uh, okay, that, I know why that's doing that. Let's fix that. It does not like, what is it hitting that it doesn't like? It shouldn't be hitting anything. What the hell is this hitting? Was it hitting this? I'm just going to delete some, deleting extraneous blocks. I, I just don't want this interacting with anything until I get it figured out, essentially. See, I'm going to let it float in the air. I, don't, I just don't want to hit anything, and then I can fix it. Um, it. It's hitting something. It's interacting with something. I want it to stop doing that nonsense. All right, so that's all the way up. And then, see how... Okay, it's trying to... Because it's trying to rip it off there. Um, that's max reach there. So I think we need another point of articulation, which is fine. We have the space for it here. Um, try to think how to do, how to do. Oh, come on. Okay, so I think we're starting to get the geometry pretty pretty, uh, pretty set here. All right, so I kind of want bucket midline here, so I'm going to kind of make a fake bucket again. I'm just going to do the shape of the bucket, so um, it's just hard for me to visualize where is where. So let's actually not do a bucket. Let's do a drill, right? The drill is what we're going to actually have, right? So let's think of the drill. So if we look at the picture, let's go back to the picture really quick, and then we'll finish up soon here. So as you can see, we have we have to put an electric motor to run the drill. I don't think I'm going to do a. Don't think I'm going to do the large one because we're not going to, you know, I'm not going to be able to pass power all. And it actually looks like they've used a medium. Okay. Let's uh let's solve a problem right now and push that out of block where that interacts and drives me nuts. Um All right, so that's that. Let's then say 
here's the shaft of the drill and then let's just say this is the drill head all right so I kind of have a um, kind of have my fake drill and then let's play with this and see what we can do so let's go up all right and now I just want to articulate that last section here all right so that's about my full reach out which is fine at the moment as you can see I can change the angle I can reach and still drill then I want to come in so that's actually max reach out that's pretty good I actually like that that works well it's, it's a little bit you see it's doing a little bit of glitchy glitchy nonsenses but that's because I have center blocks if I delete out my center blocks that should fix it so let's just do that and then I can so see I don't need the center blocks I have bottom blocks so let me just gonna keep it hollow for now again I, I'm just getting rid of all my problem blocks that are causing this not to work right and then during the design phase during the uh, decorating phase I can kind of fix that if I wish all right so I want to make sure I can get this all the way up and as you can see I can get this all the way up so now that is reaching up and I want to articulate this all the way back. Okay, so this isn't this is acting a little bit funky, weird, um, definitely. But functionally, it's working. My decoration, which is the piston, is not working. That's fine. Um, I think I can kind of figure out how what I need to do here. let's go here we'll finish up in a second here I'm just I'm getting close to where this is running the way I want it to run and so kind of getting close to where I want to be I don't um, that's when I don't want to kind of call it quits okay let's do this let's make this really very direct what I mean by that is again the shorter the swing is on this the we don't need much articulation at all and that will keep the piston doing minimal stuff okay let's go ahead and let's test this so this should work well I think so that's um, okay so that is about my max you see not too much glitch in even though I have that medium motor hitting and I don't really there's no there's no operational reason to have this the whole point of this is let's say you have it like this oh no see that's when it starts act act the fool I can do I can fix that with limiting the pivot the piston the pivot um, li limiting the pivot angle will fix that so let's go up so I kind of want to go to glitch is where I want to go so I'm just going to visually check it to where it wants to hit all right two immovable objects coming together that's when you have issues and so I'm gonna go here is check this and where are we at here see how it's it's acting funky already so let's say 0.125 alright so that will be our max up and then going down as you can see that's about where I want it max down I don't want it going out they don't go out like that so that's that's working perfectly and the piston looking pretty good what I can actually do is move the piston back out one and I think it will look even better but I have good swing with this as you can see I can go all the way up go all the way down so functionally when I'm actually working this you know let's say I want to drill here and let's say I have this area here that I want to drill well I can go forward back forward back drill 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 I can't rotate right now I don't let me add rotation in here it should take me two seconds to add rotation I want um, left right to be this pivot here and um, I'm not gonna slow it down we'll just keep it out at speed so let's kind of do a quick little testy here and I think we'll call it a um, finish so let's see I'm gonna I'm gonna start by oh of course it's backwards <laughs> Ugh. all right where's my actual pivot here um, there it is okay so let's grab that um, 
cut. I think it's U. U. All right, merge this back together here. Uh, what are you doing here? Um, just going to delete these blocks around here because they're going to cause me problems. And then I'll add them back in. Or maybe I won't. I might, might not need to add them back in. Oh, crap. I hate it when I get in the build and I can't find my way out. <laughs> I get lost. There we go. Okay. We're starting to get there here. Um, I'm starting to enjoy the build. Uh, I wasn't really looking forward to build, rebuilding this. You know, mainly it was the rebuilding part I wasn't looking forward to. And now I'm enjoying it. So that's kind of, you know, getting to that point of where... I don't want to reset either. Um, it's kind of a, you know, it's enjoyable. That's that's where I'm at now. Um, kind of thinking up the geometry is kind of can be a pain, but okay. So let's go in first person. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do some mining here. So I turn on my drill bit. I'm going forward and back, forward and back, forward and back, forward and back. Okay. I need to reach out a little bit further and grab some more. So let's go ahead. There we go. Let's go reach out more. Forward and back, forward and back, drilling, 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 drilling. Lots of ore. Money money for days. You know. Okay, let's reach in here. We need to reach this spot here. Drilling, 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 drilling. Alright, so we are limited to um one eighty. I may or may not change that. I like it right now. Um I just have to change the velocity pivot. It's not the end of the world. But I can't pass power through it, and that's why I didn't do it. I would have to do a turret ring, and then do a pivot, and then I still can't pass power all the way through. So I have to fake it with electric motors and do diesel electric. This way, um, I don't need 360 degrees. If I have a 180 degree arc, I'm happy. Um, but look at this. This thing is, like, I can drill everywhere I want to drill. I can move in and out. I have all my angles covered. Um, you know, I can come in. Drilling, 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 drilling. Like I have a little bit of, I can't reach out here very much. But again, you're not going to operate close to you all that much. But I still can. As you can see, I can still drill pretty pretty close to myself um, without problem. So this is really cool. Um, I'm liking this build a lot. Um, let's go ahead and take a picture for the video. This is good. I like this new build better than the old build. Um, this one will fit on a trailer. Let me show you my trailer here. And um, then we'll call it an episode, I think. Yeah, so I'm starting to like the build. Um, wasn't all that you know excited to build an, a new excavator because I just built one. But um, now I'm really enjoying it. So this is my low loader, uh, 53. It's not out yet. It's TTIS. Works like a real low loader. I want to be able to load this on the low loader, and so that was something that um, that was something that was important to me to get to the new one before I, um, you know, before uh, the other one just wasn't going to fit. So, for example, um, this is going to sit funky, but let's just drop this in and let's um, see how this functions. So as you can see, um, that's fine. What I what I'll do is I'll build a a version with extensions. They'll actually put um, they're like these flip out L brackets, and then you put uh, wood planking on it, and that's how you extend it. Um, so that's fine. This will fit. Um, you also the other way you can do it is you actually put in kind of like a, some ribs in the middle, and then they actually support the excavator from underneath. So that is gonna that is is looking really good. That was important to me to be able to use the low loader. And so that will actually allow me to transpo that from distance. So let's say that I can't spawn it close. I can put it on a trailer and truck it in. And that's the other one would be an absolute nightmare. Like, Let's look at the scale of the other one, and then we'll finish up here. So like, if we look at the big excavator, um, and we bring in the new excavator here, yeah, you can, you can very much see the scale difference. Um, if, I, if you paste it there, dummy, you can actually use it. There we go. Like, you can see the scale difference. 
All right, so this is a much more reasonable scale. This isn't terrible, but as you can see, like, you know, what am I doing with that boom? That boom is huge. It's going to be tough. This is much more realistic. This is much more usable. Um, and you see this current starting position. Starting position starts there. I could put this in the bottom. This should, uh, the piston should probably come out one now. I have plenty of articulation space. So a lot, lot to work with here. Um, I think this is going to be um, a lot of fun. Um, you know, currently, you know, data recording, this is October 1st. 12 days till the uh, DLC comes out. Um, we get new train parts on October 7th, so six days uh, to get new train parts. So I kind of want to spend this um, time getting, um, getting you know, this sort of build up and running. Um, I want to, I want to, I need an excavator. I can theoretically um, load my ore with an excavator, but that's going to be very laborious. I want to get some sort of front-end loader going. Um, I have plenty of dump trucks. I have my Mac, uh, Mac R dump truck. I have a mining dump truck that it runs. It's not really done, um, but that kind of gets me where I need to be. Uh, for the DLC, and so so when um, the train parts come out, I'd like to. You know, uh, the train is up and running, and we can use it in the new world. I just want to be ready for when the uh, when the DLC drops that uh, I can actually use it. So uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching. Thank you for everybody who has subbed. I appreciate all you guys, and I appreciate you for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.